So by the early 2000s, it was becoming pretty obvious that the portable cassette player really wasn't up to snuff for listening to your great mixtapes anymore. Uh, portable CD players were out, but they were still really fragile. Not as fragile as mini disc in terms of shock protection, but they were large and bulky. And of course, around this time here, some balding guy, apparently for some fruit company, was talking all about a device called the iPod. Now, this is mine from high school here myself. It's a 30 gig unit that I got used. But for those who were much cheaper and whose parents didn't have deep, didn't have pockets that were just as deep, um, you got yourself an MP3 player. Now remember, flash technology at the time was still pretty expensive. So you could get a 32, a 64, or even 128 megs of flash storage in this little tiny box here. It let you play your music, maybe two or three CDs that were encoded in MP3 formats. And of course, later on, you could also get yourself music playback, uh, games, and video playback in something such as the PlayStation Portable. Now, for all of these products here, they are pretty, well, with the exception of the PSP, they're all pretty small, but they aren't really extravagant, the kind of thing you want to carry around in your pocket and say, oh, look at me, I have myself a portable music player. Given the fact that you are currently downloading all of your music from, what, Napster, LimeWire, and Kaza? Kaza, whatever. You wanted something that was a bit more expensive and something that was a bit more flashy than an iPod. Remember, I iPods were not yet a flashy item, and years later, we don't even have iPods now because, well, modern smartphones have done away with all of this and made it into one compact package that's also a phone and text messaging device. But back then, they were still individual devices. And on the high end, you had the Archos Series 4. Now, Archos is known for their portable hard disk-based audio recorders, their multimedia devices were already fairly successful, so the Series 4 that came in um, decided to make a few extra changes. It decided to bump up the specs and just make it otherwise very expensive, but they also tried to bring down the cost at the same time. I've seen a few of these over the years, and there's several things I've noticed. One, they break pretty easily. Uh, two, to bring the price down, they had to remove some things from the box or from the unit itself, and you had to pay extra for those. Um, for example, if you wanted 5.1 surround sound with these units here, we'll get into how, why that's a thing in a moment, uh, you had to pay for an extra plug-in. Our MPEG-2 was also an extra plug-in, and various audio formats were an extra plug-in. Uh, some of the accessories that you'd normally find inside the box you now had to buy separately. And, well, there you have it. But it was still a common product. I've seen two in my entire life, and these units here came out in 2006, 2007. So they're just a little over 10 years old now. Finding a working one? Well, anyways, this unit here was purchased for a modest $15 in my local secondhand store. It's boxed. It's pretty much brand spanking new. It's immaculate. And remember, these things used to sell for hundreds of dollars brand new. But what exactly did you get inside the box, which itself is fairly nondescript. There's no markings on this thing besides it says Archos and that on the front. You'd almost be discouraged to say it's some other product. But inside the box... The first thing you see is the Archos Media Player. And it's not bad. It's like it's, it fits in your hands. The controls are in a good spot here on, the, on this side here. You have a speaker here, you have, where is it, a microphone here, you have indicator lights on this side here. On the top here you have a TV LCD mode, you have your power button, you have your headphone jack here, and on the bottom side you have your battery release, and a set of connectors here for your inputs and outputs. I say inputs because the big thing about the Archos units is that they were digital video recorders. You can record video to these. You can actually stream, for example, from DVD, or from television to MPEG layer 4, and it would record onto the 30 gigabyte hard disk on this. This here is the 604 Wi-Fi. So this here actually includes wireless and a touchscreen and a built-in Opera web, web browser, which itself is a bit strange because the touchscreen can be hit or miss, and the web browser was known to be quite slow and lacking a couple of features, such as some JavaScript support. But this unit here is so clean. Like, it's, it looks like it never got used. 
Oh yeah, one other thing about this. Check this out. Kickstand. So you can actually have it like that and sitting on a table and you can watch it. I don't know, with your significant other or yourself on the train or whatever, what have you. But let's see what else is in this box here. I'm going to put that off to the side. I love how there's this foam ring or foam square right here. So when this is closed, it actually sits over the archo so it can't scratch the front of it. That's kind of cool. And we have a cardboard insert. Cool. And two other boxes. La 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 la. Let's do this one here first. And I see manuals underneath there. Archos. Out of the way. So in this box, we have some sort of brackets. I'm assuming this, this, yeah, the Archos fits in here, and I guess there's some sort of, it's got a pass-through on it, so there's some sort of device, I guess, that sits through. I think there's probably the DVR base for this here, and this just that lets this generation of unit plug into it. Cool. Uh, what do we have here? We have the USB cable. So USB on one side here, probably USB 2. On the other side, we have the connector. It doesn't use like any other like USB type mini or micro or whatever. It's using its own thing because everybody was rolling their own at the time. And I'm not seeing an AC jack on here as well. So I'm assuming this is also charging, which means if you don't have this cable, you're kind of out of luck if you have, your battery goes low. I have a cheap set of headphones. Are they, these have been used, they're worn out, but they do say, art. they are branded with Archos, you cannot see that. And it has a volume control on it as well. I, I never really like that with devices where they have integrated volume control, but also the external headphones or an external device also has a volume control because then it comes into a strange balance where you're trying to find which one's gonna be the right level. Anyways, we also have the video cable here. Is this video in or video out? I don't know, but it's using one of those um, tip ring ring sleeve things going on here. So yes, yeah, so this is a multiple, this here is being used as headphone and it's also being used for video in or out. I can't tell. Cool. All right, what else do we have in the box? We have a box. Mm -hmm. We have, like, this thing's never been used. It's so clean. Ooh, what's this? I'll leave that for a moment. So we have the carrying pouch for the unit. So I guess you don't scratch up the screen. It does make it a little bit bigger, but I guess also, I guess if there's a hold switch on here somewhere, maybe that is the hold switch. Anyways, I guess with that there, you can then have it so you can't crack the screen or something like that. It does... It does have something hard inside of here. So yeah, definitely if it something presses against here, it goes out to the sides of the unit. But there's no pass-through connector on there, whatever. Oh, what's this? Hey, there's a stylus in here too. Okay, so now I have a stylus thing going on here. Oh, okay, no, that's just marks. Okay, so there's a stylus that also hides inside the carrying pouch as well. Cool. And this little thing, what is this? DVR travel adapter. So I have DC input on one side, and I have AV in on the other. And on the bottom here, I have that damn bracket again. And this just clips in. Which way is it? Okay. Okay, no, other way. That clips there. Okay, so then it adds that there. I don't think it fits in the carrying case anymore, though. Definitely does not, so you do have to unclip it. Speaking of unclip, where's the release on this? Uh... Oh, okay. Never mind. Just comes off. And what else do we have in here? Okay. Hey, cool. Documentation. I'm not going to read through all this, but we'll just quickly glance at what we have here. Important before the use, before the first use of your product, charge the battery for a minimum of two hours. The battery will charge by plugging the supplied USB cable into a computer that is turned on. Yeah. Okay. So how to charge it. And that's just instructions in bilingual, so it's also in French. Uh, and the manual. Quick start guide, actually. Cool. So yeah, plug it in. Very much Windows XP on this thing here. Yeah, everything's drag and drop. So you can download all your videos and music from Napster and Kaza and whatever you were using for host file sharing. 
Let's pull up another one. Bear share. Who remembers that? And yeah, you could just drag and drop it in there, I guess. Uh, limited warranty. So it just basically reminds you that there is a warranty on this thing. Legal and safety notices in several different languages. Yeah, whatever. Accessories. Archos 404, 504, and 604 series. All right, yeah, let's look through this one here just to see what this is. And DVR station. Okay, so there's... There is... If I can grab it, there we go. There's this thing here. So this actually sits on top of a DVR dock, which I guess has inputs and... Yes, here we go. So it has inputs and outputs that you plug in there. So I see component, digital, audio, and composite in and out, remote control, uh, a USB mini B connector. That's pretty handy. And a USB A connector for USB host. Huh. Odd. And yeah, record from TV, playback on TV and DVD quality, listen to music, connect to your PC, and charge your Archos device. Uh, there's the docking adapter. I guess it's just a USB connector. That's all it is. And there's our travel adapter. Uh, record video directly on your Archos from most external video sources with included video cable. Okay. Um, just tells you here exactly what each one does. Portable speakers. Sure, if you wanted to have portable speakers, you can turn your Archos into a boombox or something like that. Uh, helmet camcorder. Here we go. This was another thing with the Archos is that you could get this little tiny, I guess you'd call it a lipstick camera. And you could basically clip it to your helmet or clip it to whatever, and just had a wire that plugged into the Archos. And because it's a DVR, you could record video straight to the Archos unit. And then you could dump it, down, dump it out to your computer later. Video cable. Here we go. Playback videos and photos on TV. Enjoy music from your Archos. On your stereo system, this cable is dedicated to Archos devices. Okay, so that video cable we saw, that's video out only. So we can't record anything right now because I don't have anything to do that. Removable battery pack, car charger, power adapter. Uh, connect, cannot be, the car charger cannot be connected directly to your Archos. So it requires one of the docks we mentioned earlier. Uh, power adapter cannot be connected directly to your Archos. So again, we need another docking adapter. That was well thought out. Uh, stand case, sound case, travel case, software plugins. Here we go. This was one of the big gripes. A whole bunch, like all these like features that were in the previous units, we didn't have anymore. Cinema plugin, get extra video format capabilities. Oh, that was it. Okay, no. Yeah, there's that one there. Video podcast plugin, get extra video format capabilities. Um, Playback free video files downloaded from the internet. Free video files downloaded from the internet uh, with MP4, M4V, or MOV extensions encoded with H.264 video codecs and soundtracks in MP3 or AAC format. And listen to audio podcasts. Free audio files downloaded from the internet in AAC or M4A format. So that was the big thing. You had to pay extra for all these extra formats, which now we do use. And back then, those, they were high-end plugins or high-end formats, and it cost money to use them. Great. Thanks, Archos. But yeah, there we go. So let's just, for now, dump all of this back into the box. All right. So that leaves us with the Archos unit itself. Let's see if we can turn this thing on for the big reveal. Actually, I don't even know if the battery's charged, so let's see what happens. All right, and power. It turned on. I see Archos. I see a hard drive light that's blinking. Hmm. Well, this is something I've seen before. We'll get to that in a moment. System is damaged. Would you like to recover it? Uh, well, all right, sure. Let's repair. Okay. Checking partition table. You know, now that I think about this, we didn't receive a, a, an installation disk with this system here. Hmm, I hope there's nothing important on there that we need besides drivers. Well, it rebooted, so that's a good sign, I think. Did it, like, finish? 
Oh. I know. Hold on a second. Yeah, as I thought. So what we're looking at here is that when you saw me put my ear up to it, I heard a very distinct clicking of a hard drive. That is one of the downsides to having a hard disk based um, portable media player. They are much more fragile than an MP than a flash based unit. Not so CD units, I guess, are somewhere in between because sure, it's a CD. You can drop that and if you break the disk, you can get another one. But yeah, on this one here, if it starts clicking, you're going to need a new hard drive. So of course, the first thing you think of is, oh, well, we can just upgrade the hard drive in this thing and like reformat with another drive or something like that. Not entirely. One issue with the Series 4 is that partway through their firmware revisions, they decided to begin locking down their hard drives. You can't just put another hard drive into these machines and expect it to just reinitialize, format, and work. It's looking for, I guess, system files, or it's looking for a serial number. Otherwise, it's trying to match itself up with the hard drive, and it just simply won't support anything else. What that means is that if your hard drive fails, yes, sure, you lose everything that was recorded onto it, but that means you have to send it back to Archos or a certified repair facility. Um, they'll switch out your hard drive. They'll do all the relocking and re-encryption and re-engaging of a, a replacement hard drive into the units, and then they'll bill you for it and send it back to you. And near we are 10 years later, I'm pretty sure if I go to Arch House now and ask for a replacement disc, they're going to say, I'm sorry, this product is no longer uh, supported by us. Please buy one of our newer products. Great. Well, let's... All right, well, there we go. Well, let's quickly ins take a look inside anyways, just to see what kind of a hard drive it is. I specifically remember for the iPod minis, when they run into hard drive or capacity issues, uh, in reality, uh, the hard drive inside of them is just um, a Type 2 compact flash uh, micro drive slot. So some people did just go with uh, compact flash cards and upgrade the machines or repair the drives like that. I believe also with the uh, early iPods as well, they use basically a implementation of IDE as well, and those drives are relatively replaceable as well. I know a few other products that use those. But let's open this unit up here. All right, so I'm going to remove the battery. Where is the battery? Oh, is this side the battery? Yes, the big side here is the battery. Lithium cell hasn't swollen up. Apparently it's holding a charge, so that's a good sign. 3.7 volt lithium ion polymer, Li poly, yay, fun. Uh, the reset button is hiding behind here as well, but I am seeing just because it's so thin, I'm willing to bet the hard drive's hiding over on this side over here. So I see two screws here, and I see four screws over here, but I'm going to assume the top two screws are the ones to open this. So let's grab our screwdrivers here. There we go. One... Two. And these will be fun. Oh, yeah, these will definitely be fun. They're small screws that don't want to come out easily. I may have to pry them out while loosening them if I can keep them out. Come on. Maybe they're just captives. I'll leave them like that. Can I get this one out at least? Okay, no, they aren't captive. I got this screw out. It is also a different size, so great. I almost feel like this is stripped out. Has someone been in here already? There we go. So our two screws, and I guess this just pops. Yep, that side lifts up. And this side, oh, I can see. Work it out. 
There we go. And inside... Well, isn't that a disappointment? Okay, hold on. Pot comes off. A little piece of plastic has fallen out. So this is one of those strange Hitachi Travel Star drives. Um, it's actually like the platters right here, the arms right here. Usually when you're used to a hard drive, you have all the connectors along here. And I see a lot of these where the connectors are over here. But on this board, we can see there is, let's try and not break this. There's this ribbon cable here that connects it to there. What model is this? Uh, Hitachi hard disk drive model HTC 426030G5CE00. What's it under that cover here? Nope, okay, that's it. Uh, 30 gigabytes, 4200 RPM. And it does have the sticker here saying A604 Wi-Fi V7. So this here does have a custom firmware flashed onto it. That's probably how it locks the hard drive into the unit. So we're totally screwed here. Um, I'd have to find... Well, it just means I can't use the unit because I can't get the hard drive replaced. I can't get the hard drive re-imaged. I'm not sure what I can do here. It's kind of... Uh, I guess you could say it's bricked. I mean, it works. Clearly, we can see it's, it's working. But because the hard drive's no good, there's nothing we can do about it. Cool. Okay, well, I don't see a reason to go much further into this. I don't want to tear this apart because it is very clean and nice. So I'm just going to carefully reassemble this. We'll snap the battery back in place, and there we go. We have ourselves our Archos unit, which is no good. So I'm going to throw that all back into the box and forget about it for now. But there we have it. So I have myself an Archo 604, which looks great. It's a great shelf piece. I guess it's a conversational piece if you're one of those people if you like having really nondescript boxes up on shelves. But for its actual purpose, um, video, music, and uh, pictures, can't use it. In my opinion, I strongly suggest finding yourself a PlayStation Portable. The 1000 is fantastic. The 2000 does include a video output port where usually the remote control plugs in, but I always, like, they got a nice weight, they got a good size, you can get games for them, uh, either native or emulation, whatever, but you can also get movies. And there's a good selection of movies for them as well. Like, look at this example. So I have here The Fifth Element. I have Tron. I have Napoleon Dynamite. And these are available on physical disc format. And there are so many mods and add-ons and, mod and like accessories you can get for the PlayStation Portable. And there's so many other cool gadgets that these Archos units didn't have. Like, you can look around. You can find the cameras, the GPS units. There's even a... TV tuner that was available from Japan. I think I've gone over that when I found one in Japan. Uh, and these are not that expensive now. They're really cheap. Even getting replacement batteries is not that difficult. And when you brick them, which you're probably going to do if you're going to put a custom firmware on there, uh, they're really easy to unbrick as well. There's information on how to do this all over the internet. Anyways, that's all there is for the Archos player, and that's all the time we have for now, right now. So until next time, have a good one.